Um, when discussing surgical instruments, I have a variety of them uh, laid out here, and I'm going to talk through the various different um, instruments you may come across. First of all, dealing with um, needle holders, a uh, huge range in price and quality. Uh, my favourite would be these. These are a pair of uh, six inch Kral wood suture holders. The beauty of these is that they have these tungsten carbide inserts which enable them to hold the needle very delicately but also to hold suture material without damaging it. They're of the right length so that you can hold and release in this so-called hand or plastic surgery grip which I find a better way of controlling it than holding it in a more traditional way. They have a very delicate ratchet process and often just a single click is all that you require for holding on to a needle. Um, overdo it and you risk doing this which is neither going to please you nor your patients because they are a little fragile. Um, on a similar vein is a pair of disposable Kral wood needle holders. These are much cruder in design and build. They have a very rough toothed um, jaws and the click is nothing like as nice as on the uh, reusable pair. Um, but they are, they're not bad and they can at least enable you to uh, hold them properly even though they don't always hold the needle well. Um, these are a much shorter pair of a similar idea however they're unpleasant to use they're too small really to fit into the, the um, palm grip and rather unpleasant to use um, on a single-handed operation. These are often found in uh, surgical sets and I would avoid them at all costs. The idea here is that you can um, hold the needle holder like this and therefore get it close to the skin. However, I see lots of people trying to operate them using them like this, which is difficult. And also they are virtually impossible to use in a um, palm grip. So I try and avoid those if at all possible. I also have within my instrument sets um, a pair of um, artery or mosquito forceps. I do sometimes see people trying to use these to um, hold on to needles. They're not designed for that. They, in an extremist they can be used. I like to have one straight pair and one curved pair. Curved pair is quite useful sometimes for being able to do gentle blunt dissection or um, releasing skin um, when you're trying to uh, close wounds. Uh, also very useful for holding on to bleeding blood vessels um, whilst you prepare to sort them out. Uh, when using uh, tissue forceps my favourites are these reusable very delicate Adson forceps. Um, toothed and non-toothed the tooth are very fine and very delicate on the skin and they have the advantage that you can hold them in this very delicate way to manhandle tissue. Not to be used gripped like this or rotated since that will damage um, their fine uh, ends. These are perfect. A um, copy of these in a single use disposable set looks very similar from the outside. The action is nothing like as delicate as on these and you'll also notice that the teeth are not as fine on the toothed ones. Mm. You may see these smaller instruments in some disposable sets. Personally I find them too small to use for ordinary skin surgery. I think they'd be fine for operating around the eye but not really on the skin, they're too small. These are often found in surgical sets, um, particularly useful for reaching into abdominal cavities, but if you're operating on skin, really they're too long and too cumbersome. And then finally these, which are to be avoided at all costs, the so-called 
T-O-E or turnover end. These are unpleasant to use, they tend to have very large teeth and they damage tissue, so not to be recommended. When it comes to scissors, uh, my favourite to find in any operating set is a pair of these curved, blunt-ended strabismus scissors. These are particularly good not only for um, cutting tissue but also for um, working around cysts or for undermining edges to help close them. Because they're blunt you're unlikely to um, injure yourself. Uh, this is a disposable pair of similar uh, scissors and you can see there is a difference in quality between the two sets. Um, however, better to have a sharp pair of disposable ones than a blunt pair of reusable ones. I also look for a pair of uh, very fine um, pointed uh, uh, iris scissors and these are also very useful for delicately cutting tissue. Uh, be careful though because they are sharp and they can hurt you. In addition, what you would like to see in every set and available to the surgeon is a pair of um, much heavier gauge scissors that are designed for cutting dressings or for cutting sutures so that you leave your delicate skin or tissue scissors um, for use purely on skin and for these for cutting everything else. Uh, when it comes to scalpels, the most often used blade is the number 15 blade here on a disposable handle. These are fine, however, um, often better and sharper is to be using a carbon steel as opposed to a stainless steel on a reusable handle. Um, the idea here is always to insert the um, blade onto the handle without harming yourself or anyone else. This is the way I teach people to insert them on so that it's clicked on and then to remove to simply apply and pull in that way and off it comes that into the waste. What you do not want to use is your fine beautiful suture holders for putting needles on and off. Um, if you have a larger um, 20 or 22 size needle you, uh, blade you need a larger handle or those as well can be in a disposable kit but again remember these will be stainless these will be carbon steel so tend to be sharper. Along with this I also like to find a pair of skin hooks in my operating set because these are so useful for being able to um, pull out tissue, lift up the specimen you're taking out or open up the wound in order to see what you're doing. Um, if you don't have a pair of skin hooks it is possible to make your own DIY skin hook quite simply with a diabetic uh, syringe and needle whereby you apply it, turn through 180 degrees and you now have a skin hook. This is very good for delicate tissue, for instance on the face, um, but easily broken if you try and use it on heavier tissue. One of the useful disposable items that we use in uh, minor surgery is the punch biopsy. This is a 4mm punch, the ideal workhorse used for biopsying rashes or maybe superficial um, cancers uh, for histology. They also come in a 3 and a 2 millimetre diameter. 2 millimetre really is too small for histopathologists to be able to analyse the specimen. 3 millimetre is about the smallest you can use and that I tend to use for uh, facial punch biopsies. Um, 5 millimetre, 6 and then we move up to much larger uh, 8 millimetre. Now when I use these, if I use them, it would tend to be for excising uh, nevi of a slightly smaller size um, and doing a simple closure. 
uh, available abroad, but sadly not in the UK, is this version, the Visi Punch, mm -hmm. which has the added advantage of enabling you to be able to see what it is that you're biopsying. As well as the uh, punch biopsies, I also make sure we have a range of disposable curettes. This is a 4mm and this is a 7mm diameter. Remember, these are effectively circular scalpels, so if you cut with these, they really will cause damage. They have a blunt side and a sharp side, so make sure you always know which side it is you're using. They're certainly a lot more reliable than the old-fashioned uh, Volkmann curettes, which tend, unfortunately, to be blunt and very rapidly, and getting them sharpened uh, seems to be beyond many departments. Finally, the Dermablade. This is a really useful um, instrument when it comes to shave excisions. It is effectively a long, flat uh, uh, blade, like a scalpel blade, but much, much more flexible than a scalpel blade. I also find they are considerably sharper, and these make an excellent instrument for shave excising uh, lesions such as intradermal nevi. Two other things that are used at the beginning and the end of operating. The first is what I tend to use for um, anesthesia and everything except uh, end organs, and that is uh, xylocaine with adrenaline, either one or two percent. And we mix this with sodium bicarbonate to make it iso uh, pH, and that takes out the sting and is a very nice um, anesthetic to use. Uh, and of course, the other thing, everything into histology. Uh, almost without exception, every item should be sent off for histology. As far as marking the skin is concerned, um, I tend to favour these types of twin-ended um, skin markers, so they have a coarse end and a fine end, and these are perfect for uh, marking before surgery. They have their own built-in measure, but they also come with a small uh, ruler, which is very useful if it's um, necessary to work out not only um, the margins around a lesion, but also for that perfect three to one ellipse excision to get the um, actual dimensions correct. When it comes to sutures, every surgeon tends to have their own favourite. For me, it tends to be for skin and for uh, non-absorbable sutures would be um, ethylon. Uh, this is a 4O suture. I tend to use these on larger excisions, um, often back or abdo or lower leg. Although, because I close nearly all of my wounds with deep absorbable sutures, if I did need to use skin sutures, I might use something uh, lighter, such as a 5O ethylon. This on a 16mm uh, cutting uh, needle. Uh, this one, a 19mm, uh, is fine for large lesions, but for smaller lesions, a 16mm is a perfect size needle. Um, if, however, I'm operating on the face, I'll use a much finer 6O ethylon. Again, on a 16mm needle, any smaller than that, and it becomes difficult to um, handle the needle. Some people prefer proline. Uh, there are different characteristics, um, but both proline and ethylon are excellent sutures. When it comes to absorbable sutures, uh, people often think in terms of uh, vicryl, coated vicryl. Um, this is on a 16mm needle, which is a perfect size for putting in deep sutures. Personally, I never use this material. And the reason for that is that it is a braided material, and therefore the chance of infection and also of developing little sterile abscesses, I find, is much higher with this. So the two absorbable sutures that I tend to use all the time are either monocryl or PDS2. 
Monocryl is a superb suture, it's very easy to use and it's strong, um, but its tensile strength uh, disappears quite rapidly. It's really lost the majority of its strength within two, at the most, three weeks. PDS2, however, is a unique suture in my experience because it maintains tensile strength for some two months. It can take up to nine months for the suture to be fully absorbed and very, very rarely you'll come across patients um, whose bodies tend to reject it and will cause um, a reaction with it, but that is incredibly rare. In my experience, this is the absolutely superb suture for any excision below the neck where you can um, insert deep sutures. Above the neck, I would tend to be using a 5-0 monocryl.